Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to perform a two-sample t-test for paired samples or a dependent sample t-test. So this is the example where we have connected samples. So a very, something very common is a before and after situation. Like you weighed so much uh, before you took a diet and after a diet you weighed so much. And so you'd have the same um, people that were going through this particular test. Now in this example, what we're going to say is we want to, want to know that if drinking too many Red Bulls will adversely affect subject test scores. And so we want to see if the difference of their means is zero or not. Uh, does the evidence support that drinking too many Red Bulls adversely uh, affect their test scores? So our hypothesis setup is that our null hypothesis is the difference between the average of um, A or B before or after are the same. And the alternative hypothesis is the difference between the two means are going to be different. And we're going to do a alpha of 0.05 or a 0.05 significance level. With Excel, it's actually pretty easy to do a pair two sample for means t-test. If we have the data analysis tool pack, we can just enable that. You can Google data analysis Excel tool pack and see how to enable it. All we need to do is go under data, data analysis, and it comes up with our data analysis window. We want the paired two sample for means because this is, a, this is a paired test. This is a dependent test. I click OK. My variable range is my before. My first variable range is before. My second variable range is after. And I have labels since I selected the labels here in uh, row three. My output range, let's put it in over here, H3. Click OK, click OK, add some original data over it, and we have our output for our pair two sample for means. Since this is a two-tailed test, we're going to be looking at that row. Let's highlight that. And we're going to look at our t-stat. So our t-stat is 5.25, and that is greater than our two-tailed test, indicating that we will reject the null hypothesis. So so the hypothesis that uh, Red Bulls may not adversely affect subject test scores, we can't accept that. We're going to reject that one. So the alternative hypothesis is the Red Bulls do uh, adversely affect subject test scores. That is our hypothesis. That's our alternative hypothesis. So that was really easy to do with the Excel data analysis toolback. But what if we want to be a little more challenged and do this by hand? So we have our formulas to get our t test score and uh, from that we also need to get our um, standard deviation or sampling error. To get all this what we need to do is we need to do the difference between the two um, variables here before and after. So all I need to do is equal 70 minus 40 there. Press enter. Copy that formula down. I also need to square that because it's going to come into effect in my calculations here. So take that and square that, press enter, bring that down here, and these are need to be summed, press tab, sum E4 to E13, press enter, and let's bring this one over, and that sums to 2600. So let's figure out this particular formula. We're going to do, we're going to get our standard deviation first, or our standard error here. So let's figure out the mean of the differences, which is going to equal to that divided by 10, because there are uh, 10, a count of 10 observations here. Press enter. And our standard, so standard deviation, standard error uh, numerator is going to be this part up here. So that's going to be that value, because that's the sum of the square difference is, oops, it's going to be this value minus the square of the sum of the differences, which is going to be, let me put in parentheses, this value squared. And we have to divide that by 10. Those are the observations. N is the observations, close parentheses, press enter and that gives us 640. So let's figure out the denominator here. That's fairly easy. That's going to be our observations 
minus 1 for our degrees of freedom here, n minus 1. All right, so that's 9. Now I need to take the square root of the numerator divided by the denominator. So I'll do square root, oops, equals square root, open parentheses, numerator divided by the denominator, close parentheses, and I have my value of 8.43. Now I can use this, my standard error, standard deviation standard error, to plug into my formula for my t-test here. So let's look at the test value. So it's going to be this value. This is the mean of my differences, which is that value up there. So it's going to equal the mean of my differences. And then divide that by my standard deviation standard error that I got here divided by the square root of the observations. So that square root of the observations is 10. And press enter. Whoops, I forgot to put add additional closing parentheses. Excel was nice enough to do that for me. And I get my value of 525. Coincidentally, that value is the same as my t-stat up here when I did the data analysis. So my critical value, we can actually use a formula. You can look this up in the table for t, a t distribution table, or there is a formula in Excel that will give you the ability to do that. That's called t inv.test that will give you your critical value. Our probability is 0.05 and our degrees of freedom is going to be 9 here, right? Or I can just reference that, close parentheses, press enter, and we have our critical value of 2.26, which is our value there. So that is also telling us that our test value is greater than our critical value, so we will reject the null hypothesis. If we wanted to look at an easy way to get our test value, there actually is a function in Excel called t.test. Press tab to open that parentheses. Look at array one, comma, and then array two, comma. What kind, how many tails? It's a two-tail test because we have the hypothesis where we're does the difference in the means equal or not equal? So we're going to do a two-tailed test. And what type of t-test? This is a paired test. We press 1, close parentheses, press enter, and it gives us back our p-value, which is 0.0005, which equals that. So those are the same. So that is less than 0.05, and that tells us to reject the null hypothesis. So there's different ways that we can do that if we want to kind of do it manually and go through the formulas and functions in Excel. So this was the one of the quick ways to get it done is using this t-test function or we can go and use the data analysis tool pack for that. But if you want to get challenged you can also use the formulas and different types of functions in Excel to figure that out. So that's the way that we can do a two, two sample t-test for our pair t-test or our dependent uh, t-test. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.